All right, everybody, welcome. Today we are diving deep into AI-powered scent technology, specifically a company called iNews. You guys wanted to hear more about this, and honestly, when I saw this, I was fascinated. Um, we've got their press release. It's dated January 13th, 2025. The title is iNews Unveils AI Nose for Robotics. And they're inviting uh, global robotics companies to work with them to shape the future of, well, as they put it, smell-enabled robots. Okay, an AI nose. That sounds like, I don't know, something straight out of a movie. Right. So okay. robots, uh, they can see, touch, hear, but smell. Like, why is that such a big deal? Well, it really has been the missing sense in robotics. Okay, that's true. I guess I never really thought about it like that. But how does it actually work? This press release keeps talking about um, digitizing scent. What does that even mean? Like, how does an AI smell? Okay, well, it starts kind of like our noses. They use these things called MEMS gas sensors. They're tiny, and they detect all the different gases in the air, just like, you know, the receptors in our noses. But then that's where the AI comes in. Okay, so it's not just detecting the gases. It's figuring out what they are. Exactly. Mm. The AI analyzes the data from all these sensors, and then it interprets them. It tells you what those gases actually represent, whether it's burning or something floral or whatever. So a robot could actually tell the difference between like uh, fresh baked cookies and a burning toaster. Exactly. Wow. That's, I mean, that's amazing. And they're aiming this specifically at the robotics industry. Right, right. Why robots though? It seems like this tech could be used for tons of different things. Well, they give a few reasons in the press release. For one thing, the robotics market is huge. Yeah, I saw that. The numbers were kind of mind-blowing. It's projected to reach, get this, $178.63 billion by 2030. That's almost double what it is now. Yeah, that's that's a lot of robots. But are they getting ahead of themselves? I mean, is the robotics market even ready for this? Well, think about this. Just in 2023, over half a million industrial robots were installed all over the world, most of them in Asia. And then you've got humanoid robots. Oh, yeah, those are becoming like a real thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that market's predicted to hit almost $50 billion by 2031. Wow, it sounds like they're um, they're betting on a market that's about to explode. Yeah. Okay, so we got all these robots. How does their AI nose actually fit into all of this? Like, what are some specific examples they gave? Well, they mentioned home safety, healthcare, even keeping an eye on the environment. Home safety. I can yeah. see that. Like a robot that can smell a gas leak, you know, before it's too late. Yeah, that's a big one. Could be a lifesaver, literally. Yeah, no kidding. Think about it. It could detect gas leaks, burning smells, even like spoiled food. And it wouldn't just smell these things. It would actually understand the danger. So it's like a super powered smoke detector. Yeah, exactly. I'm sold. But uh, what about healthcare? They said it could uh, diagnose diseases just by analyzing your breath. Right, they did say that. I mean, is that even possible? The science behind it is pretty cool. It has to do with something called volatile organic compounds, VOCs. They're released in our breath. And they're unique biomarkers for different health conditions. Wait, so my breath, the air I breathe out, it carries like specific clues about my health. It does. That's wild. So like, Robot doctors sniffing patients now. Well, maybe not robot doctors just yet. The technology's still, you know, it's early. Right, right. But the idea is pretty amazing. Detecting diseases early on and without any needles or anything, That's that could be huge. Okay, so we've got home safety, healthcare. What else? They talked about some industrial applications and uh, environmental monitoring. Okay, so like robots sniffing out pollution or dangerous chemicals in a factory or something? Exactly, it could detect hazardous leaks or monitor pollutants in the air or water. Wow. The possibilities are, well, they're pretty mind blowing. No, it sounds like iNews is uh, thinking pretty big here, but they're not planning to do this on their own, are they? What's this iNews Alliance all about? Right, they're not trying to go it alone. They want other robotics companies to partner with them to integrate the AI nose into their robots. So like a team effort. They're like the brains behind the operation and they're bringing in the muscle. I like that analogy. And it seems like they're offering some pretty good incentives for companies to join. Like what's in it for these other companies? Well, they get to use all of iNews research and development, right. all their expertise, and they get a you know a head start in this whole new market. It's like joining um, a winning team right before they take off. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so just to recap, Inu's figured out how to give robots a sense of smell. They're aiming for this huge and growing robotics market, and they're putting together a whole alliance to bring this tech to the world. 
That's that's a pretty impressive plan. But what does this all actually mean? Like for the average person, mm -hmm. what are the real world implications of robots that can smell? Well, that's where things get really interesting. We've just scratched the surface, I think. Okay, well, we'll have to dive into all of that in part two. This is already, this is blowing my mind. Oh, no, it's fascinating stuff. Okay, everybody, we'll be right back after a short break. Do you want a deep dive podcast like this? Contact Bull Run by Charlie Devanzo. All right, so we're back. And uh, we were talking about the real world implications of robots that can smell. I'm like ready for my mind to be blown again. Well, I think we can definitely do that. Let's uh, let's start with, I don't know, agriculture. Think about robots that can smell when fruits and vegetables are perfectly ripe. Only the best quality produce makes it to, you know, the grocery store. Okay, yeah, that would be amazing. No more guessing at the store if that avocado is actually ripe or not. I'm in. And not just ripeness, they could also smell diseases in plants or pests, things like that. We're talking about like a whole new level of precision in farming. So like robot farmers. In a way, yeah. But uh, it goes beyond just farming. Think about, um, Think about things like perfume or coffee. What if robots could design custom scents or blends based on your preferences? Okay, now that's getting a little sci-fi. It is, but it's, you know, it's not impossible. If they can analyze the chemistry of smells and learn what we like, it's it's not that far-fetched. So like robot sommeliers, robot baristas. Yes. But then that brings up like a whole other set of questions, yeah. right? I mean, we're giving robots a sense that we as humans use for so much more than just you know, identifying things. Right, it's tied to our emotions, our memories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What happens when robots can, like, understand those things, too? That's a big question. And honestly, we don't have all the answers yet. But we have to at least think about it, yeah. right? I mean, we're talking about robots that could potentially, like, understand our emotional states based on our scent. Yeah, and respond to them. Or, like, what if they could smell changes in our body odor that, you know, indicate a health problem before we even know something's wrong? That's, I mean, that's amazing, right? But it's also kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Like, what if they use that information against us? Right, there's always that risk. It's like, we're giving them all these new senses, but we don't even know what they'll do with them. That's why, uh, that's why we need to be so careful about how this technology is developed, how it's used. We need, like, ethical guidelines, regulations. Mm -hmm. We don't want to end up in some dystopian future where robots are like constantly sniffing us out and judging yeah, us. Yeah, nobody wants that. Okay, but let's uh, let's back up for a second. Is iNews the only one doing this? Are there other companies working on, you know, AI smell technology? That's a good question. And the answer is, uh, not really. I mean, there are others exploring it, but nobody's as far along as iNews. So they're really leading the pack here. It seems that way, yeah. But uh, there's got to be some challenges, right? I mean, smell seems so subjective. It is. And that's one of the biggest hurdles, I think. Replicating the human sense of smell in an AI is incredibly difficult. So, like, it can identify a specific gas, but it can't really understand what that smell means. Right. The context is really important. Like, methane could mean a gas leak or it could mean a cow pasture, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. It's not just about the hardware, the sensors. It's about the software, the AI, and how it learns. So we're still in the early stages here. We are. But even so, the potential is it's huge. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> okay, but let's get back to this Ainu's alliance. What do you think about their strategy of, you know, bringing all these other companies in. I think it's pretty smart, actually. Yeah. yeah. It lets them tap into all this expertise. They're not trying to do it all themselves. Exactly. They're basically crowdsourcing innovation. And they're positioning themselves as, like, the leaders in this whole new field. Right. They're building an ecosystem around their technology. It's like they're saying, hey, we've got the foundation. Yeah. Let's build something amazing together. Yeah. I like that. But, um... There's got to be some downsides to this too, right? Of course. Managing an alliance like that can be really tricky. Like herding cats, probably. Something like that. They'll need to, you know, keep everyone on the same page. Make sure everybody's working towards the same goals. And then there's, you know, the whole issue of profit. Right. These companies aren't doing this out of the goodness of their hearts. They see a huge opportunity here. I mean, that's business, right? It is. But it's important to remember that profit and progress, they're not mutually exclusive. Absolutely. iNews and their partners can, uh, they can make money and still, you know, push this technology forward and hopefully make a positive impact on the world. But we also have to think about the ethical implications. Always.
And I think that's a good place to uh, to move on to the final part of our deep dive. Yeah, let's talk about the bigger picture. The societal implications of all of this. <laughs> because this is this is big stuff. Okay, so we've talked about the tech, the market, you know, the applications, the challenges. But now I want to talk about the big picture. The long-term, like societal implications of robots that can smell. Yeah, that's the that's the really interesting part. Because this is, I mean, this is a whole new thing. Robots that can see and touch, we've kind of gotten used to that. But smell, that just, it adds this whole other dimension. It does, it really does. Mm. Smell is such a powerful sense for us. It really is. It's connected to our emotions, our memories, you know. Like certain smells can instantly transport you back to a specific time and place. Exactly. And what if robots could, like, understand that? What if they could smell fear or happiness or sadness? Okay, now that's that's getting a little creepy. Yeah, it is. But it's also, it's fascinating, right? I guess so. But it also seems, I don't know, dangerous. It could be, yeah. We have to be really careful about, you know, how much power we give these robots. Because if they can smell our emotions, I mean, they could use that to manipulate us, right? Absolutely. Like imagine a robot that knows you're feeling insecure and it uses that to sell you something. Or, you know, a robot that can smell when you're lying. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's some, that's some serious stuff. So, like, we need rules, right? Ethical guidelines for how these robots can use this information. We absolutely do. We have to make sure this technology is used for good, you know? And that's that's not just up to the companies that are developing it. It's up to all of us. Exactly. We need to have these conversations now before it's too late. But... Uh, let's not get too carried away. There are also some really amazing potential benefits here, right? Like, what if robots could smell diseases before we even know we're sick? That's one of the most promising applications, I think. Yeah, that could that could save so many lives. And, you know, it's not just about healthcare. Think about robots that can smell gas leaks or fires or other dangers. Right, they could keep us safe. And they could, you know, help us understand the world around us in a whole new way. So it's like... A double-edged sword, right? This technology has the potential to do so much good, but it also comes with some serious risks. That's a good way to put it, yeah. So, like, what do we do? I think the most important thing is to, you know, to keep talking about it, to keep asking questions, to keep pushing for ethical development and regulation. We can't just bury our heads in the sand and pretend this isn't right. happening. See, it's because it is happening. And it's going to change the world one way or another. So we better be ready for it. All right, everybody, that's our deep dive into iNews and their incredible and kind of terrifying AI knows. We've covered a lot of ground today, and I know there's still a lot to think about. But hopefully this has given you a good overview of what this technology is all about and, you know, what it might mean for the future. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Do you want a deep dive podcast like this? Contact Bull Run by Charlie Devanzo.